My name is Cheyenne. And I'm Julia. Jack.org is a Canadian charity that works with um, young leaders to change the way we think about mental health. I had gone to a new school with a new peer group, new expectations, like you name it, it was different. But before long, it overwhelmed me. And I was constantly anxious, even when I couldn't pinpoint what was upsetting me. The sight of my school made me feel sick, and I hated the weekends, because the weekends were just that much closer to another Monday. But I didn't know what to do about it, because I'd never had that mental health talk with anyone. To me, mental health was something I knew about, because you know, I, I watched the news, I read books and stuff, but I never really internalized what it meant for me and how to take care of myself. And it got to the point where I just didn't know how I was going to be able to keep going. And so, thankfully, I did start to reach out. I didn't have like an Oprah-worthy aha moment, like the clouds didn't part and it was like, it was nothing special like that. I just kind of came to the realization that this wasn't something I could see myself dealing with on my own for who knows how long. And so I started to reach out. I talked a bit to my parents about what was going on, to a couple of guidance counselors at school, and a few of my close friends. And I was so relieved to have people who I knew cared about me understand a bit about what I was going through. And then even better, and this often happens when we can take that step to reach out, we were able to make a plan to change things for the better. I used to think back in high school that if I asked for help, that meant I was weak. But now I know when I ask for help, it means I'm strong, and it means that I get to be healthy, and that's what's ultimately the most important. And so I hope by sharing my story, I've inspired you to have those conversations, make them normal conversations, really ask people how they're doing and care about the answer. Because if we do that, we're going to end up having a lot less people who struggle in silence, and that is our ultimate goal. We actually need to acknowledge that mental health and mental illness are two separate conversations. The difference is everyone has mental health, as Cheyenne was just talking about. Mental illnesses are actually specific clusters of symptoms in your thoughts and feelings and behaviors that can be diagnosed by a professional. And I know for me, in my school, um, stigma kind of reared its head in that if someone missed a day of class, for example, and you asked where they were, it was really easy to say, oh, I had a stomach flu, I was sick, I was at home. That was totally fine. What people felt that they couldn't say was, Oh, I was feeling really sad the other day and I just couldn't even get out of bed. And that's where that stigma exists, where we find it's okay often to talk about our physical health, but our mental health doesn't get that same treatment. A lot of times when we're struggling with our mental health, it can really take a toll on other areas of our life. So maybe um, you aren't hanging out with your friends as much anymore, or you're skipping class, or you're not talking to your family. And so when you notice these kinds of things, um, it is a pretty big indication that you might want to reach out uh, you know, to get some help. All right, so first things first, changes in what people do. So this might be something like someone's no longer participating in one of their favorite extracurriculars. So someone's just like not showing up to soccer practice anymore. Maybe they're not showing up to class anymore. And maybe they're taking on more risky behaviors like uh, more substance abuse or even self-harm. I know for me, my behavior changed in that instead of wanting to hang out with my friends after class or with my family on the weekends, I was just always alone in my room. And that was something that was really abnormal for me, a change in my behavior that was a red flag that I was struggling. For me, really struggling with mental health started uh, in high school during my transition from high school to university. So it kind of wasn't a bit in grade 11, but really kind of ramped up in grade 12 where there was a lot of stresses I was kind of dealing with. So, you know, there's the stress of uh, what you want to study and, you know, basically do for the rest of your life. Um, what school you want to go to, how that's going to affect your friendships. Um, I was also dealing with a lot of issues at home. My parents were uh, going through a divorce at that time. And my sister, who was really my biggest support, had just left to go to med school the year before. So I was really the only one at home now taking the brunt of all this and, you know, also dealing with all these things at school. So I really didn't know how to deal with the stress that was kind of coming to me. And so by the time I got to around February of my first year at university, uh, I pretty much stopped caring about anything. Whether it was uh, my school, whether it was my friends, uh, my family, or my future. Um, and so I really didn't care about my own life. Now it only really got better uh, when one of my friends from high school reached out to me 
and just shot me a message and was like, hey, you know, how's it going? I haven't heard from you in a while. And normally when my friends would message me and I didn't want to talk, I just respond with something pretty easy to say, like, you know, you just respond with a happy face or something like that, and then it's like, okay, they're happy, it's done. Um, but this friend really wanted to get a bit deeper, didn't want to leave it at surface level. And so they started asking questions on my life, and they said, you know, oh, how's your sister? She knew a bit about my family stuff, so she asked about that. How's, you know, your family doing? How's um, that stuff affecting you? Those kinds of things. And basically, she noticed these kinds of changes in how I was acting, how I was feeling, based on how our relationship had gotten so, so much worse over the years. And started asking a bit more and a bit more, and eventually I started opening up a bit more. And as I started talking to her, I learned something really important, which was that the problems I was facing in my life weren't problems that had no solution and no one else knew how to deal with. Whether you're connecting yourself to help or connecting to a friend, there's a lot of different things you can use. You know, talking to a teacher is something that I think works um, pretty well. It obviously depends on your relationship with them. I'm not going to force anything on you, whoever you're comfortable with. But oftentimes, they kind of know what's going on with your life. They know the school dynamic. But if not, you have your guidance counselors at school. You have your parents you can talk to. Um, and there's also other centers in the community. So I know for me, talking to my parents really wasn't an option for me. So I called Kids Help Phone a lot. I know the word kids is there. And, you know, when I was in grade 12, grade 11, I was like, Psh, I'm not a kid. Like... I'm an adult, I can call an adult help phone. But um, kids help phone is literally for students, uh, kids from any age up till I think 19 is their recommended, but you can call them way past that as well. Um, and it's a great thing, it's 24 seven, it's completely anonymous and you can call them about literally everything. Maybe you need to work on your time management or your goal setting. If, if you have your time management more in order, maybe your assignments aren't piling up to give you those stresses that cause you to go over to that stress, struggling, crisis side of the spectrum. Might also look like having some healthier routines in your life, so getting enough sleep, eating well. We want every single one of you to join the movement. There are so many ways to get involved and start being an advocate for mental health, and there's literally something that works for everyone. So it could even just be starting more conversations about mental health, but it could be volunteering with an organization in the community or a club at school. Uh, it could be taking a stand on social media or even writing a letter to a government representative. These are all steps that everyone can take that are going to allow us to grow our network and have our voices be heard even louder because it takes all of us. And then, Really awesome as well, our Jack chapters. So these are student groups in schools, usually about five to 15 students who are working to make sure mental health is an everyday conversation. 